you are a multifaceted individual. And I, by that, I say, you can't just go, well, he's a lyricist, musician. I mean, there's the art a- element to what you do, but American yes. Nomads is the band that we were connected to talk about. Yes. How exactly did American Nomads come together? Well, I, I mean, like anything else, uh, uh, it has a long history and a short history. So the long history is that when I moved into the firehouse in Brooklyn where, where I live, Walter Kennel is the owner of the firehouse and he was in a band called Metropolis way back. And um, so he brought on this new singer. She walked on stage. I fell instantly in love and that turned out to be my wife now, right? This is way back at the Lone Star they were performing. So years went by and Susan did her own gigs at like the Iridium. She was doing jazz circuit and R&B and everybody was doing their thing. But in 2010, I was uh, I was doing a residency in Venice, Italy. I was living in Venice and Susan and I went to visit Janet and Walter. They have a house in Croatia. Walter's Croatian originally. And um, we were like hanging out on this beach and he's like, hey, Rich, I want to get back into music again. What do you think? And I'm like, he goes, can you write some lyrics? Because I had a book of poetry published. And I'm like, I'll give it a shot. I never like wrote in like a structure like that, you know, before. And on the way back from Zagreb to Budapest, because we went, flew in through Budapest, I ended up writing this lyrics to a song called If You Want to Play. Walter put the hook together. I put the lyrics together. And that was it. And then it just started. Dante DeLamos came on board. And we started like working under like a couple bands like DRW and just putting some things out there. And then we did a Revelation's going to come in, I think it was like 2015. And Joe Volpis, uh, who's been a longtime friend of mine, he worked with Lady Gaga, mm-hmm. a number of very big people. And he's, he produced it. And Joe said, hey, you know, you guys should really form a band to really to support this. And that's how it happened. And then we ended up putting this rather large eight piece band together you know and so that that's how it happened and from there it's just been like a, a, a you know a train rolling down the tracks since then the name american nomads the history that you just told me about some expat status over there not just a clever name actual some truth to it because you all are artistic people who come from all over the place no, it's true. And, and like the nomads came about because, uh, you know, I, I wanted to give this like persona of like, you know, the the, the people riding the rail. And, and so our logo with that coin is a, it's a um, uh, it's an Indian head coin or buffalo nickel. And it was carved out. And that's what nomads were the hobos who rode the trail that rode the train ride after uh, the Great Depression. So they were called American nomads. It's a slang expression, but it works great for us because we have somebody from Dominican Republic or we did, he's, he's not with us right now, meaning he's taking a temporary break. We have people from, I mean, all Americans. I come from Germ- German heritage. My wife is from Italian heritage. We, we come from all over, right? And some of us were actually born in those countries and came here. So it, it does fit very well. Yeah. The drummer, Joe Vitale, is it Vital or Vitale? Well, uh, Joe, so our drummer is Joe Conascenti, but Joe Vitale, who's going to be joining us. He's a drummer. He's worked with the Eagles, uh, Ted Nugent, yeah. uh, of course, we still Nash. I mean, he's, he's a guy. You Lots know? of time there. Well, I didn't know how to say his last name because the sports broadcasters, Dick Vitale, and right. they yeah. somebody of proper Italian heritage and they go, it's not Vitale, it's Vitale. You're in exactly. LA. So exactly. I didn't know if Joe was a stickler for how his last name was said. I, I, I don't know, but we, we say Joe Vitale and, and Joe was introduced to us by Ken Franklin, our, our media agent. And uh, we, I mean, we love the guy, nicest guy in the world. And not only that, super, super talented, has all this history behind him. We gave him the um, running on an empty heart. We, we recorded it here in Brooklyn, sure. gave him all the stems. He put the stems together and it just sounds incredible. He did such an amazing job with it. So we're sticking with him. He's going to produce our next single and hopefully the next and the next after that. It's amazing that somebody like him has kept up with technology and trends all these years later, because a lot of his peers, they kind of didn't learn the digital way of doing things and they look down on it. Not Joe. Well, now Joe is like all, all around guy because he knows the digital stuff. He mastered everything as well. But he took our digital stems and he actually put it on an analog system to match 
the sound of what American Nomads is, which is like this Americana, American root sure. sound. So that fit that sound for us. But Joe can do anything. I mean, it was totally electronic, and then he just brought it down to analog after that. That is smarter. That That's above my pay grade, to say the least. <laughs> Mine but, too. <laughs> but in the case of your band, some people kind of shied away from putting out any new content during the pandemic, even if it was made before the pandemic. Not you guys. You put out a video that I, I saw for the first time about a month ago. Yes. You got the new music. Do you know anything that is concrete for 2021 and 2022 at all? Nothing. N no concrete at all. I mean, you know, we were discussing there's going to be this big uh, music exhibition or music performance, I guess, in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of asked to, to do like a pre, it's going to be in 2022. We've been asked to do that. It's going to have some big names. It's kind of like a live aid situation. Mm -hmm. And we may, they asked us to maybe do a preview. So we're thinking of recording that at Drum, which is one of our local places we play at a lot here. Yeah. Doing like a big recording there and then using that as like a, a live feed over there during, I think it's May 25th in Ghana. Other than that, man, we're just, you know, hanging fire on it. We, we don't stop creating. It's a prolific band. So we're constantly writing. Right now we have literally about 22 songs in the hopper wow. that are, in various stages of new recording, completely recorded, finished, uh, mixed, unmixed. And that's been going on for like a year and a half. So we were about to release some new songs before the pandemic and just sat on it for a little bit. But we get together every week, um, rehearsal, writing every single day. It's a huge team, eight, eight member band and probably 15, 16 people that for everything from social media to you know, promotion to photography, you name it. It's a, it's a big operation here. Before I ask my first official question, as they say, off the record, you mentioned <laughs> having ties to Woodstock and you guys were part of that great festival, that anniversary festival. Were you the catalyst to making that one happen? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, it came from a couple different directions. Ken Franklin actually was childhood friends. Ken is the media agent once again. Uh, and a good friend of the band, I mean, like family. Uh, he had a friend who was a, a childhood friend that was up at Bethel Woods. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he gave them our information. But Walter has a place near Bethel Woods, like a, a, a weekend house. So he knew that guy also. So we ended up playing at a small place up there called Dancing Cat Saloon or something. And it's just like, you know, it's like distillery, you know, big crowd. But still, it wasn't like Bethel Woods, right? Right. And the people from Bethel came over, saw us and booked us. So it came from like a multitude of sources, how that happened. Cool. Well, the Woodstock scene truly intrigues me. And I say that because it's got all these people that are super famous and super respected, but it's all seems to be this word of mouth thing that I know, for example, Levon Helm was having all these off the radar kind of concerts in a barn that were going on. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> his place is incredible. Midnight Ramble was up there for years. It's still it's still there. The Midnight Ramble. Amy runs it. His daughter, but yeah, when you talk, so I bought in '95, right? So I bought from a guy that was on the television show Cheers. Okay. So I, so everybody's kind of hidden away in the woods. He he played Eddie LeBeck, the hockey player, uh, Jay Thomas, right? Okay. And and when, and he was good friends with Robin Williams, who happened to be living next door, literally at that time. Robin and, Williams is a Woodstock guy. No, no, I think he was probably just getting away. He's a San Francisco guy. He was, yeah. and, but he, I think he was just getting away, right? Yeah. So I think he was good friends with Jay, and um, so I mean, down the street from us, Brad Pitt owned the place down the street. You've got musicians like uh, uh, from Steely Dan, the piano, the lead singer from Steely Dan. So I'm just drawing a blank on his name right now. Not Fagan uh, or Becker. Not Donald Fagan. Oh, Donald Fagan. There. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So then you had the whole band. Susan was doing uh, a single uh, years ago and when Garth Hudson played accordion on her single from the band. So you have the band, I, I don't know if it's Satriani or uh, Matheny has a place up there. I mean, you name it. Uma Thurman is up there, you name it. And then of course, for years and years and years, Rudgren had Utopia Studios. Yes. So you'd go into town, you'd see Todd Rudgren all the time up there, but you'd go into town and anybody he was working with would be usually playing at the local bar. XTC, Matchbox 20, Joan Osborne. These are people just going up to the local bar and like hashing out material in front of everybody. I've seen everybody. Also, 
Tony Levin lives up there from Peter Gabriel's band. And also Jerry Murata has Dreamland Studio. Murata's a guy up there also. And yeah. he was with Music Gabriel too. I know Rachel Yamagata and she has a place up there. Tracy Bonham is seen her <laughs> all around the place. Crazy. Gail Dorsey from Bowie's band. So what I'm getting at is you, besides the band as a whole, you sound like you're always surrounded by artists as well from different media. Yeah, and I and I from all different media, and I travel a lot too. So I mean, I literally, like I mentioned, I, I've lived in Korea, I've lived in Venice, Italy. I was in Pakistan last year. I was up in Islamabad. So in my whole life really is about that. I mean, COVID put a stop on all that, right? Yeah. Right now, but we're you know the firehouse we live in here, Walter's Firehouse is. It's like that though. It's kind of like living, I guess. I'm not a deadhead. My brother is who's in the band, but but uh, it's kind of like the dead house, I guess. Because nobody locks their doors every night. We go next door. I mean, I don't drink, but we go next door and have a drink or have dinner together. It's a big, open, artistic environment here. And Woodstock is the same for us. Although Woodstock, honestly, we're kind of, uh, I think most people who go to Woodstock kind of lay really low. Like I build my stone wall. Like I, I live very publicly in New York and privately in Woodstock. I build my stone wall or I cut my lawn and chop wood up there. That's, you know, that's what we do mostly. And most of the people we mentioned do the same. If, if you want to see Uma Thurman, you got to catch her like nine in the morning at Bread Alone for a cup of coffee. Because after like 930, everybody goes back to their houses and their property and kind of hides out to the, you know, for the day and then <laughs> gathers again at night again. Interesting to me. Well, to kind of recap what we've talked about, we're waiting to see if the band is going to be involved with the Ghana benefit, the Live Aid style benefit. Yes. Yes. Nothing is really concrete, but the band is active and planning to move ahead. Everybody's writing a lot. You said, I think, 22 songs ready. Oh, and we have more. I mean, every, we almost have to like everybody has to say, OK, let's let's chill out for a second, because every week there's somebody's bringing something to the table. George LaGrange is bringing three songs. Walter's writing a couple songs. Susan's writing a song. I mean, everybody's bringing things to the table and I'm constantly churning out lyrics. But I'm not the only lyricist, of course. I mean, Walter puts lyrics in and George does as well. I do the majority of them, but they also start their own songs. Um, yeah, but we're waiting. We, we were going to do a European thing last year, but that got put on hold. And we're uh, you're at this position right now. Like if you try to book anything like we booked Bearsville Theater, we did a live stream from Bearsville Theater up there sure. in September. And you run the risk of not being able to perform. So you do all the promotion, everything else, and who knows what the laws are going to be at that point, you know, and how safe it's going to yeah. be. Hurry up and wait, as they say, except exactly. that you're in Florida where it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Florida is never normal. Nothing against our Florida fans, but, you know. Exactly. Well, my last question for you has nothing to do with the band. It's about you. And that's what TV show can you recommend to people who need a new show to start? That is, wow, okay. Um, so let me tell you what we're watching now. Suze and I are watching uh, Transparent, which is not new, right? But it, we're just getting to it for the first time. Within the and, decade, that's, you know, new in the scheme of the world being thousands of years old, sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's shot really, 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 really well. It's like yeah. watching a movie every, you know? But we burn through things because, you know, we don't, so we live in that New York lifestyle, right? We basically eat dinner at midnight every night. Susan's like three <laughs> hours. If she works out every day for an hour and a half, she rehearses hour and a half. I work till 10 in the studio. So at 12 o'clock at night, we sit down to dinner and put on something, but you burn through things fast. So we're, we're just, we're in like the third or fourth season right now of Transparent and it's highly recommended. It's very intense and very, very good. An award-winning show that deserves it. How often yeah. do you hear that? Exactly, exactly. And also reruns of MASH. You could re go back to reruns of MASH always. Well, actually, random question here. One sure. thing I was trying to figure out, is it that the American version of MASH had no laugh track, but the British version had the laugh track, or is it vice versa? I didn't even know MASH was for it. I know, like, all in the family was, but I don't know. Um, I don't know, actually. That's oh, I, I mean, when you see the reruns, if you look in the wrong place, one of them has the laugh track, and I can't remember if it's the British or the American version that has the really awkward laugh track. In there. Now I'm going to have to go and listen to it because I have, you know, 
you get so conditioned to laugh track. I don't even know if it's there anymore, unless it's really, really, really bad, which some of them are, right? It's really a, bad. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll watch tonight and I'll shoot you an email. Sounds good, Rich. Well, thank you for your time. Keep up Darren. the great work and looking forward to everything you have coming up and the band has coming up. So, Darren, thank you. Day. Thank you so much. And anytime you feel like taking a drive to Woodstock, let me know and you can help cut the lawn and build some stone wall with me, okay? Yes. Sounds good. <laughs> and see you in Long Beach, Rich. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. I'll talk, I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Darren. Outro cast.